Hello everyone, I'm Lauren and welcome to a very exciting day. Today is finally hatch day for the quail chicks. Sometimes it feels like incubation goes on forever, but here we are, the eggs are finally starting to show the first signs of life. Now you might be wondering why these eggs are different from the ones we set up a couple of videos ago, and that's because these ones actually got stuck in the post. It took them over a week to get to me, and I had a real dilemma as to whether or not I was even going to bother setting them on. After such a long journey, it seemed unlikely that they would hatch at all. But I'm glad I did, because it turns out eggs are a lot tougher than I think they are, and despite a rather extended travel time, they have remained viable, and here they are hatching. So these are actually celadon eggs, which is just a type of Coturnix that lays blue eggs, and the setup for the incubator was exactly the same as it would have been for the regular type. But back to the eggs. You'll see that the incubator is showing day one, and that's because today is the 17th day of incubation, and it's the day you would expect the chicks to start to pip. This one was actually a day early and it pipped yesterday, so it's a little bit further along than the others. Pipping is the stage where the chick has made the first crack in the shell, as you can see just here. You'll hear the stages of chicks hatching referred to as pip, zip and pop. Pip being the first crack, zip being where the chick has cut its way along the shell, and pop is where the chick actually forces the two sides of the shell apart and, well, pops out really. And from pip to pop, it usually takes about 24 to 48 hours. And so despite the fact that we can see the shell is cracked, I wouldn't actually expect these guys to hatch until tomorrow on the 18th day, which is the standard day for Coturnix hatching. You can also see that I've swapped out the egg disc that was turning the eggs, and I've replaced it with this rubber matting. This is so that the chicks have something rough to stand up on. When they first hatch, their bones are incredibly flexible from where they've been sort of coiled up inside the shell, and they rapidly harden as the chicks start to move about. If they hatch onto a slippery surface and they can't get their feet underneath them, then their joints can actually set in the wrong position, causing a condition called splay leg that means they won't be able to walk. So it's really important that you give them something rough to hatch on. It doesn't have to be anything fancy, kitchen towel works just fine. I happen to have this rubber matting and I figured it would be something that was reusable. I've also topped up the water so that both sides of the compartment are now filled. Chicks need a really high humidity in the incubator for hatching to prevent the membranes on the inside of the eggs drying too quickly. If they do that, it can make the shell so tough that the chicks can't actually escape from it. So you can see that there's quite a bit of condensation in there, and that's a good sign that the humidity is nice and high. And this is also why you really need to resist the temptation to open the incubator for any reason. Every time you open it, all that humidity leaves and goes into the atmosphere, and it can take hours to resaturate on the inside, all the meanwhile, the egg's membranes are getting tougher and tougher, making it more and more difficult for the chicks to actually hatch. But at the moment, everything that can be done has been done for them, so it is a case of just sit back and wait. And the next day, I came into this glorious sight. This little chick looks like it pops out of the shell maybe about an hour ago, judging by the fact that it's a little bit fluffy around the face already. And it looks like there's another one on the way as well. I was just in time to catch this one. And within 20 minutes, it was charging around in the incubator with its sibling, learning how to use those great big feet of theirs. The third chick hatched out an hour later, and it was pretty certain immediately that there was a problem. For one thing, it's hatched out backwards. Chicks are supposed to come out the blunt end of the eggs, and this one was badly positioned, and for some reason it's come out of the pointy end. It's also hatched too soon, and you can see that the yolk sac hasn't been absorbed. It's still on the outside of the body. It's also very weak, and there is an air sac under the skin on its right shoulder just here. This is likely to have been caused by shaking during transit, and it's damaged the air sac in the egg which sadly is the big danger of hatching posted eggs. But the little chick is quite strong, I mean it's moving around, so I'm going to leave him in there and just see how he goes. The other issue this has caused is that the unabsorbed yolk sac has also ruptured in the incubator, and it means that the remaining eggs are now covered in yolk. Also, my two healthy chicks are now getting very sticky, and I decided to snatch them out. Ideally, you really shouldn't open the incubator when chicks are hatching, but I couldn't risk them getting stickier and stickier, so I decided that it was worth the risk. Sadly, this little chick didn't make it. It actually died about two hours later.
back. Either way, today has been a bit of an eventful hatch. Uh, this is the only tiny bit of footage I got one of them in the brooder in the evening once I moved them over. But these two chicks are actually doing fine and we'll check back with them in the morning. But thank you for watching this video. I'm going to try to do a daily update for these guys so you can watch their progress as they go right from little chick up to an adult. But for now, I'll leave you with a couple of shots I took of them in the evening and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Bye bye!